everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Real quick one today on this 1994 Lexus ES300. We've seen it before. This is the one with the really sloppy steering. Well, this time, uh, it's a few weeks ago, the customer uh, out of the blue texts me, hey, what do you charge for a timing belt replacement? I'm like, oh, she wants to do some preventative maintenance, like I suggested a few years ago. So I quoted her the price, you know, sure bring it in. And then the next question she asked, like, also, how much would you pay for this car? I'm interested in selling it. I'm like, oh, geez, I wonder why she's selling it. So, got back to her. I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, bring it in. Let's do the timing belt. Uh, might have a customer that is looking for another car. Uh, anyway, she's like, well, the car is broken. It's in the parking lot. I'm like, oh, what happened? I never heard about this. So, apparently, it's been making this, like, ticking sound for a month and just driving in town and then boom, shutters, stalls out, got it towed to a shop. They're like, looks like your timing belt's broken. We don't want to fix it. Take it somewhere else. So they towed it here. And finally she called me up. So I'm like, you should have just uh, brought it to my shop in the first place. Could have fixed it there. But anyways, we're in the parking lot. Here's what happened. Carnage. <laughs> so first thing I saw was the, uh, this pulley here on the tensioner cut its way through the <laughs> the plastic cover. I think that's not good. Upon further tear down, we see that the tensioner is supposed to look like this. Here's a brand new one, Continental Kit. So there's a bolt, nut. Well, here's what I found behind the timing cover. This was not in its home anymore. The bolt was, or at least the head of it, is still here, and it looks like it's sheared off. So what caused this? Well, this pulley, the bearing actually seized up. You can see the belt was melted on there, and finally the belt had enough force to just shear the bolt off. The pulley came off. Finally, the timing belt, you know, it got a little, it's still in one piece, but you got some shredded shredding action there. Uh, the car stalled out because the timing jumped. Uh oh, so on other cars, that could be really bad news. You could kill your engine. Kudos to Toyota for making non-interference engines, at least uh, you know in the 90s, most Toyota engines were non-interference. They had a timing belt. So I guess no big deal. You know, it looks pretty bad, but all we got to do is throw some new parts on. I managed to get the harmonic balancer off using a. Uh, improvised method because in the field sometimes you don't have all the tools with you so I just drilled a couple tools in my uh, toolbox lock bar and just used bolts to pull the harmonic balancer off it was a little stuck on there but no big deal let's throw on some new components fire this thing up and make sure it runs like new and the owner said oh okay so I guess you can fix it maybe I won't sell it then <laughs> so understandably she kind of lost faith in it because it's let her down you know a couple times in a row the coolant hose burst the steering was all messed up but we'll get this classic Lexus back on the road in no time at all so the timing belt is on a couple uh, quick tips here first of all the Continental timing belt comes with these nice marks so kind of confidence boosters that you're in the right place align that guy cam pulley align that cam pulley with the cover and the crankshaft has a mark there's a dot actually on the crank sensor sprocket it aligns with the little uh, protrusion in the casting there and then there's a dot here that aligns with the double line on the timing belt so align everything and then use the 17 millimeter wrench. Make sure it's tight on the crank. Tighten this up, get as much slack as possible towards this pulley. And then the same on this pulley. And then once you get as much slack as you can around this idler, put the idler in. And the timing belt is pretty much tensioned. And the tensioner, hydraulic tensioner, is in good shape. So all we need to do is pull the grenade pin. Actually, a bicycle spoke that I put in when I was taking it apart last time. And we're almost done. 
that's there, that's there. Let's, uh, we can put the crank pulley on, just make sure it runs before buttoning up the entire, um, entire engine. So before installing the crank pulley, I like to put a little grease around the actual crankshaft so the pulley doesn't get seized or stuck in the near future. And we'll just buzz in this bolt real quick, not too tight. We just want to briefly start the engine, make sure it runs perfect. Okay. All the clips are off. I don't see any reason it wouldn't start. That's what I'm talking about. Good Lexus. Smooth as butter. Looking good. It does look like it's walking just a little bit. But good to go. Alright, she's all buttoned up. Should be as good as new. <laughs> Love it. Make sure the AC works. Yep, heard the AC kick on. Nice cool air there. V6 per. So what do we learn today? You got an engine that has a timing belt. Non-interference is the way to go. <laughs> it's, I mean, even if you religiously change your belt every 60,000 miles, uh, stuff can still happen. You know, components these days. You know, we got the Continental kit, good components, but as long as it's not made in China, it should be okay. Uh, and uh, if your mechanic recommends that you change your timing belt, it's probably a good idea to listen because uh, you know a few years ago she's like, oh yeah, it's been done recently. Well, recently turns out to be uh, 2007, 14 or 15 years ago, like 70,000 miles ago. So that bearing, yep, it was OEM, made in Japan. He's solid. There's the carnage. So, that's it. Keep your old cars on the road. See you next time. Bye-bye.